they put a great year on that. You ready? <coughs> All right, six o'clock. We'll get started. Track. Track. Say the flag. Or is it up? Which way is it? It's up. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll bring up the one. I completely play the All right, you got it right here, but John is still recouping. We hope to have him here in July, so keep out, keep an eye on him. All right. On the agenda, did we have any changes, Brent, that we need to do here? We have two. Um, the two are the addition of fireworks permit, uh, request for a fireworks permit, sale of fireworks, and then the other one is for a uh, petition for Brinks addition. They're asking that one end of Brinks be barricaded off to help with the traffic issues that are going on. You're going to add that to your so, well, no, those would be separate items. Um, okay. I'd recommend you just probably knock them out maybe in between eight and nine. Okay, I've got to see where do we do on those. Or, or the Brinks one, I would suggest there. And then if you want to do both of them, there we can. Or Okay, so let's do the Brinks one first and we'll do the fireworks one. You just want to do them both between eight and nine? Yep. Yes. Okay. Let's do that right there. All right. Any other? Nope. Mods changes. Okay. Motion okay. to approve this agenda with set changes. Okay. Ryan makes a motion. A second. Second. Okay. Chelsea did a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Yes. Unanimous. Approved. Consent agenda. Do we have any questions on that? Specifically, say percentage. <laughs> okay. Yes. Anybody's got any questions? I'm gonna entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as is. So moved. Okay. Chelsea makes a motion. We a second. Second. Okay. Thank you. A second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. City minutes from the last time we met. Anybody got any questions on that? Concerns or anything? No. It's good. And no. Yeah. I don't know what's happening. Motion to approve the agenda. The minutes, you mean? Or the minutes, yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. Ryan makes a motion to a second. 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 Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Okay. All right. Approval of special city council minute meeting here that we had. Uh, oh, here it is. <coughs> So moved. Dave makes a motion. Can you get a second? Second. Chelsea does a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. All right, you're up to the public comment section. Anybody got anything you want to say this evening? Nobody? Okay. Move along. Okay. Sheriff's report. The one who drew the short straw tonight. All right. We'll just have here. <laughs> Always stay political. There you go. 
Uh, I'll just run through the numbers first. Total calls for service, 162. Um, the most important numbers you'll see on there, citations and warnings with the increased traffic through areas where it's not usually increased and people not uh, seeing stop signs they don't usually see. Uh, a lot more warnings. Usually we have around 10 to 15 warnings. You see this month we had 35. Uh, a lot of us, me and Lindsay, spend a lot of time down here, but that's also a lot of other deputies came down here when we were off, and we put a lot of hours in. Um, I'd like to compile like a number of hours report for this month. I might do that for next month and see what the difference is. But I'd like to see that too. Just yeah, there's. I know you guys have been, around, you and your department have been around here a lot more. Yeah, some people like it, some people don't. Of course, that's fine. Um, I expect that. Um, I'll just read the paragraph. This month we experienced 162 calls for service. This number includes eight calls related to traffic complaints as well as 22 calls for deputies attempting warrants or civil papers. There were 14 calls in reference to suspicious activity. Two of those calls were similar in nature where an individual calling to claiming to be from North Dakota 1 or Horace 1 uh, called two different households and asked whether or not they'd be home the next day. Um, nothing further came of it. They came from Russian phone numbers. Um, <laughs> Nice. It happens every, you hear about it in Fargo more, I don't think I've heard about it in Horace too much, but um, one day they're North Dakota one, one day they're Horace one, they can't make up their mind what scam they're running, so um, nothing came of it, everyone was fine, so. All right. Um, yeah. That's what I got. So nice. have you noticed some of the, the warnings and citation had dropped recently after the initial push? Yeah, so we, we keep a log um, on Microsoft OneNote or people, we, we log traffic complaints, like I log Sunnyside Street and Brink Drive is a big one. Um, I logged that in May, and then we've been hitting that hard. I've been there every shift at work since then for at least an hour a day. And you can tell, like, the site numbers go from, I, I ran for an hour, I gave four sites, or gave three warnings in a site. And now you look at it, the last five or six were no violations observed. Um, people know we're around. Uh, of course, that lends itself to people speeding in other places. So we've, we've received a few traffic complaints from um, other parts of town that aren't seeing as much now that we're uh, focusing on one spot, but we're doing our best to kind of spread it around and we urge people if they see a bunch of speeders or anything, give us a call, we'll, we'll hit it hard. Okay. Yeah, I have no, I mean, a couple or the, my daily trek back and forth out on the 81 out there. Mm -hmm. It seems like the traffic has slowed down some compared to what it was originally. I mean, there's a lot of people over yeah. there almost too quickly. And there was some passing that was going on, but I'm not, I'm not hearing from anybody saying they've seen that anymore either. And I think it's slowed down, so which is good. People yeah, I don't think I've made a stop on the detour route in three weeks. Yeah, it's been pretty good. Okay. I have no meeting to attend, so I need to run. Right. So. Okay. Thanks for coming <coughs> out. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. We'll move on to Brink Drive. Let's talk about that one. Brink, you want to bring okay. that up? Or? I'll, I'll lead it off, and I know you've been working with some folks in that area. Um, but we have received a petitioner request to have uh, a portion or one end of Brink's Drive, and I believe it was their suggestion, is, or the suggestion is to have the south end blocked off or barricaded off. So traffic can't go to and through it and make it temporary, temporarily make it a dead end road uh, to cut down on the traffic, people cutting through. Um, there was, that was signed by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen so different just households. How many, how many? That would be a good portion of that the Brinks edition. That would be most of them. Uh, we did. <clears throat> we did receive a inquiry on the city's website from like contact us uh, not in favor of barricading it uh, their feelings were that traffic has cut down with the increased tra enforcement from Cass County uh, maintenance of the road has been fair to good uh, I would say there have been high and lows for the maintenance of it uh, we've been trying to stay up on the dust control and getting the contractor to get out there to keep the washboard. Last week, I, I believe it was last week and the week before, there was a period of time where the washboard in that road was very, very bad. Um, but we've been trying to work with the contractor to keep that maintained better uh, along with the detour route. 
But the main concern that I saw within this petition was really just about, it was mainly about the speed of the traffic, uh, safety concern there, and then cutting down the number of vehicles because they were seeing a, t a very big increase in the number of vehicles cutting through their neighborhood. So they're asking for the city's help. They're requesting it was petitioned. So, yeah, and that's Steve Becker got a hold of me too, and we talked about this a little bit. And this is what I asked him to do: is to go and get a petition for the group there to try and see, you know, if that's what they want. Because I don't want to go and do something, and they got most of the residents put through with three to right. do this thing. So, um, but no, we got to, we got a pretty good uh, number of people sign on for this thing. I guess my only question would be is. Is there any issue with emergency vehicles that may have to use that route? Brent, you want to just go ahead and... Come on up there or just hop from here? Please, just, come please on up here. here. Okay. My, my name is Brent Hansen. I'm on the fire department. Okay. Uh, what, I'm probably the most active uh, first responder during the day because I, I'm disabled, so I don't have a full-time job. Okay. Um, that route that go, we go down Brink right there, there's actually three fire department people on that route, Kara Leopold, Greg Leopold, and myself. Greg and Kara live on 64th Avenue. I live on Sunnyside Street. So literally, if we have to go around to 81st and then come all the way back around, it's going to add more than eight minutes to a call. And um, everybody knows that, you know, uh, seconds save lives. So I guess my question to you guys is, is it going to be open to first responders, uh, fire department, rescue department, uh, to where, where we can get through? Or how, do, how would you like us to get to the fire hall during the day if that is barricaded off? The, the request, my understanding, is they wanted to have it completely barricaded. Right, that's what they wanted and to happen. I don't know, you and I talked about this a little bit as well. So that's why I was just wondering, you know, and I mentioned to Adam about this. Right. He mentioned they could, you know, if we set this up right, they could move the barricades to get something through. I know that's an impediment. Right. But it would be better than having to drive all the way around. No. Would, would that be something that you guys would at least... I would have no problem with that as long as uh, it's okay that we move it and then continue to the fire hall, do the call, come back, and close it back off again. Because, like I said, you know, seconds save lives. Agreed. Um, and I have no problem with that. I mean, that's what I was thinking when you and I were talking about yep. this. That's what my thought was on this, too. If you guys move it, you do what you got to do, and then you're done. You right. Does anybody else on the board have an issue with us moving it temporarily, putting it back when we're done with the call? Well, what about if we had the barricade on the other end? Instead of putting it on the, the county 17 end, put it on the 76, 76 end. 70, 76 no, is where we actually come through from. Yeah, they got to come through there. Oh, yeah. Through. yeah, yeah, we have to come through there no matter what. Otherwise, we have to go all the way around to 81. He's so. on the north side of 76. Oh, he's on the north side. Okay. Yep. So Greg, Greg and Karen on 64th Avenue. They would cut through Sunnyside Street, and I'm literally on the south side of Sunnyside Street. So, so that's what we we're thinking. Like for on Brink Drive, the yep. barricade would be up. By 17 hours. Yeah, as long as you guys closed it off and then give us permission, you know, for emergency runs where we can move it, go to the call when we're done with the call, come back. Because if, if, if I have to drive through there, close it, take off to the fire hall when Greg and Kara go through there, they got to open it up, close it, get to the fire hall, then we got to come back, open it back up, yeah. and then close it before we go to the call. Well, my hope is, is that people will just quit going there. Oh, gr agreed. Doing this. So agreed. you guys open it for your runs and come back again. Correct. It's a non issue at this point. So right. What I'm hoping will happen. Right. That way we can preserve the road. You guys can yep. you know, just kind of keep things that they're supposed to be and get people to drive on the detour as much as I know that's a little bit longer. But still. Right. Um, but if you guys are okay with that. I'm okay with it. I be, I, the biggest thing would be to talk to the homeowners so they know when certain vehicles are going through there that we're not breaking the law, we're not doing whatever, because you're going to get somebody calling us in and different things like that or hassling us for going through there. So. Yeah. But as long as maybe send out a, a notice to them or whatever that, you know, the south end is, is going to be access for first responders or whatever. So Well, same thing up on Sunnyside Street, too. Correct. We would put the barricade, I mean, if you want it on 76, or would you guys like it up on 17? Well, and that's, I, I mean, you that's know. Something, that's why I love, when I talk with you about that, yep. I'm really sure where the placement of it. And I haven't gone through guys. and done the survey yet with the people. Okay. I've just been too busy and stuff. But I, I, hopefully I'll get that done this week. And I can turn that into you too. So, sure. and then we can just just so everybody's aware of it, right? Where we would do that, so that they understand why we're you know, why and where, right? And then if we just agree that you guys go <coughs> through it, you open it, close it, and you're done. Yep. That's, that's so we're, we're we're gonna block Sunnyside too. 
Yeah. Well, we're current, well, currently currently you have requests to just do blue. Yeah, that's going to come if they get a petition. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go through and do a petition and see how many people want it blocked. If the majority don't, that's fine. I I have the mobile speed limit sign in my driveway that the digital one and stuff and just today I caught two people going through one at 44 miles an hour, one at 48 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So, and I mean I'm literally in my driveway when they do it, you know, doing this and they just they just drive. They don't care. So, yeah. I, my daycare is your neighbor oh, on sure. the side, and then my other daycare is right by the elementary school. Yep. So I drive the detour to Sunnyside. Correct. And then um, back around to the other daycare. So then if you close off the south side of the Sunnyside, I'll be driving all the way right. up and but around and back. Now, and now you know, yeah, you know the inconvenience then that we would go through as far as first responders getting to a call. It, it, it's yeah. quite a drive, you know. And I think some of your neighbor, I think that neighborhood, there's a lot of houses that might be a, a little bit of a battle as to everybody's kind of dispersing for their work in different directions. Correct. And yeah, there's a number of people in Sunnyside Street that actually go to County Road 14 because it's faster to hit the interstate to get into Fargo now than it is to go on 52nd Avenue, which is going to be closed here in a couple days anyway. So. Mm -hmm. Right. But Now, one thing I do want to expand on the concern uh, from the individual that was in opposition of the culture of this that was you know, looking through their uh, response, that was one of their biggest concerns was the impeding fire and rescue vehicles. So that was their concern. Right. So. And as far as one of them, I can't remember if it was Bindi's house or not, but I had a medical call one night. I am one of the ones that went around the barricade and drove in the side of the ditch there. So yep. um, I know they mentioned that and stuff. That was me because when we have a medical, I mean, we have a medical, so... No, like I said, and I talked with Adam about that too. Yep. So I mean, I just want to make sure we, you guys are okay. If right. We decide to do I'm that okay with it as long as the homeowners are okay with us going through there. Right. And like, like I said, as long as you make them aware of what's going on. Right. And so. I think they'd be okay with that too because everybody wants to make sure the first responders. Right. Get. Most of us do have blue lights on our cars, so we usually have something blue blinking. Right. So but you, you're denoted anyway. So correct. Go through there. Yeah. Can we have? Any, is there? Can we legally shut down a drive? Uh, a public road? Talked like to the that? deputies about this last week, and they said that we could. Okay. Yeah, and I've talked to them a couple times myself too. Yeah. So they they actually sit in my driveway and run radar and stuff. So. And I double check just to make sure too. Okay. Otherwise, we wouldn't be going through this exercise right now. Yeah. Understand. And if you do do it, I um, highly recommend that you guys contact the fire department, tell Tony and uh, yeah. Rob's yeah. too, so they're aware of what's going on. So we'll give a date, and then that's so yeah. then everybody will be aware of it. We'll get it around town so everybody knows yeah. what's going on. Biggest thing is like when we're on a call, just that we can open the gate, go to the call. We don't have to stand there, and shut yeah. the gate mm -hmm. again. You know, pull the pull the barricades back over because you know somebody's caught in a house that's on fire or whatever. Right. Um, we got to get there as soon as we can. So. Anything Any else? Questions on that? Yeah. Uh, also, keep in mind there's a storage unit there. I came in from 76 to a storage unit just by default the way I always come from where I live. Mm -hmm. And I got followed into the storage unit and mentioned that you know, the road is closed or whatever. I said, how do I get to the storage unit? I'm like, it's not my problem. But you know, you can understand why. Sure. They're frustrated. Mm -hmm. And I was passed on Brink Shrine also. Yeah, and I'm driving my big truck. When I'm driving my big truck, for example, on 81, I can only do about eight, nine miles an hour when I start grabbing because the suspension's so tight. And uh, three, four cars passed me in the morning two days ago. We well, weren't just driving two miles an hour just to be a nuisance. No, no. Well, well, that's the best I can do with that big white truck. Yeah, yeah I know. I'm just kidding. Uh, okay. No, I was driving. Okay, so you guys want to do? You want to explore that option? Get a barricade. Uh, and it's the will of the residents. Yeah, they want that right barricade right. to to reduce the traffic. So yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna hear another round of complaints from people that no, I are using it, but they're not supposed to be using it anyway. So. That road was never meant for that kind of traffic. And correct. We don't want to have this. Yeah, the gravel there is bad. And we've been getting actually trucks going down Sunnyside Street, which well, I've talked. I've talked to Corey. There's been uh, concrete trucks going down there periodically. And uh, um, like delivery trucks going down there, not not as many as we've had before. You know, before the sheriff started sitting in my driveway and stuff. So it is cutting down. But when it gets closer to the five o'clock range, they don't want to go all the way around. They want to get to you know wherever they're going as fast yeah, as they can. Resistance. So. Yep. Yeah. So. so. All right. Okay. So why don't you get back to me then next 
week. Yep, I'm going to try and run that. You can, and then we'll get this squared away at the next meeting. Yep. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Thank you, Brent. I appreciate it. Anybody else have any other comments you want to make on uh, Brink? So are you going to allow people to go in there to that residence because of the short unit? Not from County Road 17. Then how do you get in there? It's come around the other side. Okay, then, okay. Yeah, it's not going to be on both ends. It's just going to be on County Road 17. So and we should look at the signage, too, then, to make sure it says on there, you know, not a through. No, but you put, it, you put it just well, after the, you block it just after that. Storage? <coughs> storage. Well, we talked about it being on 17. I don't. We can. Right. You we can move it down. You're trying to actually not get them go down yeah. that road at all. Yeah. So you you're typically would just right after it. that. Well, you block it right at 17. Typically, so they turn around right there. It's on 17 because there's more room. Turn around. Yeah, and they they're, not around turn, they're not turn. They're turning in the public roadway, not on. Or if you put it back, they can drive around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the people's yards. Yeah. Is what they've done. No, I'm just talking right after the the storage units and they can turn right. around in that on the driveway the storage unit. Approach off of County 17. But they might end up driving the drive it's not They've done it already. If you we, put it on County 17 they there's no way we they can work we will, we will work with our engineer to identify yeah, we'll that. Work that. That. We're completely covering the road, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Three or four blocks, the three or four Perfect. signs Thank that you. are basically yes. mm -hmm. blocking the road. And then they're moving <coughs> on this movable so they can move it for fire and rescue. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, let's uh Oh, I guess the question away. is, what if uh, somebody is so inclined and they figure out the one is moved, is movable, and they move it and physically drive down it? Is that something that the sheriff then can ticket? If they I see would that? think so. Well, I, would, I would imagine it's the wording on the sign, right? That's what I mean. We'll have to put that up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It is yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And warning people before they drive in on the other end is important too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, we'll work on it. We'll get the sign. So away. I would just ask and look, have a motion of it. That would be my request. Yep. Since it's been a petition, to have a response by motion. All right. So I just want to clarify because you you still have one end open, right? Yes. right. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be on on Seventy <coughs> Sixth Avenue. Right. Yes. So now you're going to have people. Continue have, to come down, come down route. You would have, drive we would through. have to have temporary signage saying, you know, temporary dead end or something like that mm -hmm. on that. Okay. Is so that how we do it? Yeah, or we could do a road close. It's going to go with us. Yeah. We right. could put one barricade up. that you did what you were talking was if we can get there, if we can get there, um, petition, why don't we block off 76? So you can keep going all the way through that, but you, because that's where people are using it is people coming off of 76. <laughs> So, is that the more apt no, way to I do it? No, I think people are cutting through the, the whole thing. Correct. They're just using it as a shortcut. Correct, but what I'm saying is, most of them are going off of 76. It's people, in, honestly, it's people in my development, it's people on Sunnyside, it's people on, not Sunnyside, um, Shadow Lane, those types of areas, Memory Lane, that are coming through and driving through. So if we're cutting off 76, and we're only leaving Sunnyside and that open, isn't that the, those are the people who need the access? Well, if you do a road close, a single sign at 76 to warn people the road is closed and it's barricaded off at 17, I think that's what you're well, at I least some sort I'm of saying before, yeah, before Sunnyside breaks. Either way, uh, I believe the, re the request is coming from 17. Uh, a lot of folks go north, they're not going south. Okay. And that's probably why they're asking for it at that location. Uh, either location is fine. I'd say staff. A lot of people turn around because they can have a barricade. Yeah. I don't know, but I guess start somewhere. I guess. Yeah. Hmm. And we can adjust if we if it's not sure. working on that location, we could flip it to the other side. Sure. And I think it's you'll get both because a lot of people, you know, they come through and maybe they don't aren't familiar, and so they go through as far as they can. Well, oh, I can still get through. So I'm gonna go this way. You know. So if that, they'll just keep going until they get cut off and turn around to them. I'm just concerned that if I'm driving down that road and I'm watching my speed and then all of a sudden I'm blocked, and then I have to turn around and I do all this, now I've gotten pissed and I'm going to down the road at 40 miles an hour to get out. Yeah. That's my only concern. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. going to come back though? What's that? You gotta go back. Probably not, but you go. <laughs> you're gonna get a lot in the beginning. As I know, but I'm just I've had a lot in the beginning already. So I understand. I understand. 
<laughs> we'll get the logistics of that work out tomorrow at the construction meeting. So yep, okay, I mean, good. We'll block off, brink drive at seventy at seventeen, but put a road close to the head sign at seventy six and seventeen. Okay. So let's get a motion on the table here. A motion we approve the petition requested by the citizens. Okay. So Dave made a motion. Can I get second. a second? Chelsea does a second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. Okay. So Jim, you'll get a hold of we'll take work on that with us. All right. But we're stating that there's another one potentially coming yep. for so some reason. We'll, we'll repeat this process when Brent comes back in again. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Okay. On to the next one. Fireworks. Okay, the next one is we received an application for the sale of fireworks. Um, what this would be is to, it's from, uh, is it Black Powder Fireworks? Aaron? Yep. Uh, and Aaron is in the back, the applicant, if you had any questions about it. Uh, but it would be to sell fireworks for a very short period of time coming up before 4th of July here, going up to that. Um, right at 720 Main Street here in Horace. Johnson's old. They have, they did sell fireworks here last year, so they're asking, they're able to get a lease worked out to where they can sell again if the fireworks permit was granted. Aaron, you want to come up here and introduce yourself so people know who you are? <clears throat> Stevenson. <laughs> <laughs> I will be selling, hopefully, fireworks on 720 Main Street in uh, Steve Lewis's building. Okay. They're still working on the deal, but... So you got enough time to put this all together? <laughs> fireworks is a really quick thing. Okay, and fair. We always find people, so yeah. Okay. No, that's yeah, we'll start probably early, late this week, early next week. And okay. No, that sounds good. Yep. Yeah. We're kind of wondering about that. I know I got some. We questions. need a better season this year than last year. So, <laughs> <I'll> plug there. <laughs> You'll have all the cool stuff. I to think sell I them. saw you there. You'll have all the cool stuff to sell them. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah, you don't need to go down the road. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody got any questions? Let's get the permit. It's uh, the 27th through the 5th is the selling season, if you were curious. So, the application and so forth was reviewed and approved by staff. Right. We went. Through, I went through it today with uh, Mr. Stevenson. Okay. Uh, so no issues. They are. they did it last. They were yep. selling fireworks for the city last year. Um, we didn't see any issues. I'm unaware of any issues last year with them. So. so motion to approve this permit. Okay. Second. Right. Motion. Does a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Good luck. Good luck with Thank it. You. Thanks, Aaron. All right. Number nine. Since he's a local business, can we put a plug on Facebook or something for him? We got a page. Oh, hey, we can share that. <laughs> okay, so first of all, this is my fault, right? Oh, is this your fault? Put, you put having to put this together for us. Well, so this is the presentation that the mayor asked the city to put together for the Home Builders Association, and he must have liked it so much he wanted to hear it himself. Absolutely. So uh, we've added some stuff and modified this for this meeting today. Uh, this is really just an overview of lot inventory in Horace and uh, some comments about the growth that we're facing going forward. Um, it's pretty basic. It's pretty informatory. Uh, you can go to that side, Brian. Brian. Uh, in the last 18 years, Horace has grown 211%. Um, and with there's current zoning patterns, if the densities continue to hold and the ratios there now, the build out in Morris is somewhere between 10 and 14,000 people. Um, based on current building rates, that would be achieved before 2045, hence the 2045 comp plan. If you go forward, Brian, you'll see that uh, in the, since the past census, we've really only grown approximately 17%. Uh, now, as, as the, you get closer to the new census, the estimates become worse. Um, so it's probably a little bit higher than that, but not too much. The margin of error was 18 people. So really, all of the growth that we're looking at is in response to the school. Currently, we have 117 vacant, available residential lots in the city. But within our entitlement program, somewhere within it, we have 906. Uh, 410 of these are on track to be available in spring 2020. And go one more. All of that is after the school bond. So the developers are responding to the, you know, responding to the public vote on the school. Um, if you look at our permit, tracking our residential permits in the past uh, four years, it's been 
steady state, more or less so. Um, 47 last year, and we're on track to hit that this year. Maybe a little bit more, but. Uh, the number of homes we've permitted so far is in 27, and it's just new residential standalone homes. Uh, the projection's about 50 for this year. The projection for 2020 is 150. Uh, that has to do primarily with Terra Garden. <coughs> um, we would expect the average value of a house in Horace to decrease significantly given the types of lots that are being developed next. Uh, most of the lots being developed next, except for one subdivision, are majority R6, residential six. That's 10.9 units an acre. Uh, those are the 40 foot, 40 foot by 100 lots is the minimum size you can build. Um, but in reality, most developers don't build up to 10.9 units an acre. They're sitting somewhere between six and nine. Um, when you go to the next slide, one of the things is when we talk about density, density is just one part of the discussion when we talk about how do we deal with subdivision plats. Both of these subdivisions here are 10.9 units an acre, and they look very different. Uh, so that as we go through the comp plan process, we continue to make adjustments to our code and adjustments to how we engage developers to make sure that our subdivisions continue to reflect the highest and best use. Commercial permits, this doesn't really mean very much because we don't have a ton of new commercial permits every year. Um, but we would expect to see an increase because of the Vistos Industrial Park. If you go to the next slide, uh, there's 19 vacant commercially zoned lots in Morris. The Vistos Industrial Park because it has most of those. Um, as we go through the comp plan process and we begin updating our ordinances, uh, they'll, we'll start moving away from traditional Euclidean commercial zoning and take more of a centers and corridors approach. This is to maximize flexibility and have more defined standards. It's defined design standards. It's a way to help deliver the public vision that we hear through the comp plan process, which is to kind of reinforce that small town feel and the things that why people move to horse in the first place. The raw land that I would anticipate having this center of the quarters designation is somewhere between 150 and 200 acres. If you go to the next slide, you can kind of see what a centers and corridors designation might produce. Uh, that's Dilworth Town Center, for lack of a better term. That's where a lot of the, the social activity in the town of Dilworth happens. You know, the main town pub is in there. There's a music venue in there. There's a convenience store in there. That is a reflection of a very advanced centers and borders code. So we continue to make improvements to make sure that as our commercial land develops, that uh, everybody benefits. The developer gets the highest and best use, the taxpayer gets the highest and best use, and the city gets something that reflects the public vision. And in addition to that, we continue to make incremental changes in the parts of town where we can make incremental changes. Um, and that's a Stantec rendition of what Main Street could look like you know, in a couple of years. Industrial is kind of a black box, because if you ask two city planners what uh, industrial means, you get six answers. Uh, but we have approximately 60 acres zoned either I-1 or I-2. Um, it's really hard to calculate how much of this is vacant, because so much of the industrial space in town is temporary or, or supports hobby uses. Um, and many of our light industrial uses do occur on, do and can occur under commercial zoning ordinances, such as in Rude's Edition, uh, where um, a council member Corselman has his business, for example. So that's a really quick and dirty run through of kind of our lot inventory. And I'll, you know, if anybody's any questions, I'll take Yeah, I just want to, I think we need to clarify. Can you go back to the slide where it said uh, housing value or price, did you say prices or value would decrease significantly? I the value to, of the new permits. Correct. Be, so I yes. want to make sure that yeah. we're not stating that existing houses are going to decrease in value. What we're stating is our our current average selling price of a house is like three hundred nine thousand dollars. Is that true? It's more than that. More than that. Yeah. Okay. So what we're saying is we're going to have more houses that are of a less dollar means. Correct. Be, most of the new houses either that we're seeing in our permitting system now, where we anticipate seeing, are are smaller lot houses, and so they're they cost less. Correct. So it's not that values of homes are going to go down. It's that we're going to have smaller houses being put up to provide a good mix. No. With all this growth, everybody's values are right. going down. Right. Yeah. I just, I just, that was something that I want to make sure everybody understands that it's right. like that. Do you anticipate the number of new home permits to actually accelerate after 2020? Because, I mean, if it's going from 50 to 150, and you look at there's a backlog of 906 as of right now, that means it's a basically a seven year backlog. Well, it is that, a, does that it, mean that it's gonna, you think it's gonna accelerate? I wouldn't view it as a backlog, I would view it as that's the potential we have right now. Okay. Not all of that will be approved. 
it, it's, it'd be rare to see all of that approved in any municipality, wherever you are. Um, the Planning Commission has not seen most of that number. So, actually, that's, they've seen the 410, they've seen half of it. So, but right now, just having 117. So that, right. I mean, that, that basically says we we're prepared to handle one year's worth of backlog. Right now, right. Yeah. And, what is there right now? Well, I think that's kind of eye-opening because everybody thinks we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. So there is a lot in the process yeah. that's going to come up. No, in, in but fact, right now there isn't a, a yeah. huge, huge. If you go to slide four, you kind of see the reality is it's really been, there's been a lot of prepping for growth, but there hasn't actually been a lot of growth if you look at those numbers in terms of new houses. So. Okay. Yeah, it's cool. Thank Good you. Day. Thank you. Yep. yep. No, thank you again, Matt. That was good because, like I said, this is stuff that we can present to some of the other. What, other what was some of the feedback from the Home Builder Association? Was there any feedback from them? No, not on no, this. Not on this. Just <coughs> no, information just, dissemination more than anything. Yeah, I was focused on okay. another thing, but. All right. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. Um, Lucas, you're up here. Uh, yes, good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. Um, the first thing I have is the <coughs> temporary bonding parameters resolution. Did you get Kay's email for this? We don't have to put it up there, but uh, what I this do. resolution does, um, this is in regard to your uh, temporary financing that you've been working on for um, improvement district 2019-1, 2019-2, 2019-3. Those are the, the street and sewer projects around the new school. Uh, and then Improvement District 2019-5, which is this though, Industrial Edition. So the city's working on bonding for those projects right now. Um, what this parameters resolution does is it sets uh, an amount that the city will bond for, a not to exceed amount. Um, so under this resolution, that amount is $17.5 million. So that says that the city will not uh, bond for more than that uh, in this te original temporary financing round. It also sets uh, an interest rate that the city will not uh, go over. That interest rate is at 4.5%. <coughs> so if it goes over that percent, uh, the city won't go through with, with uh, the bonding for this. Uh, I talked with bond council and they said the uh, interest rate for this is probably going to be closer to 3.5%. So you'll be under uh, that amount by about a percent. And then this resolution also sets a pricing committee, which is uh, comprised of the mayor sure. and the administrator. What the pricing committee does is once those bonds are, uh, once they're actually sold, then the pricing committee accepts those amounts. So rather than having to, to call a <coughs> meeting uh, for the council, you set up, you establish a pricing committee, which is, like I said, the mayor and the administrator. Is the 17 million all of those projects, or is there then potential that other projects can be? That's just an amount not to exceed. Uh, the city's not actually bonding for that much. The city's uh, in this initial round is bonding for 15 million, okay. around 15 million. Mm -hmm. So what it does is just saying that sure. we won't go over this amount. Okay, but if there are other sure. projects that get approved, the word document mm -hmm. potentially in the that next month, to, yes. there'll be another temporary okay. initial bond. There'll be a, there'll be another one. So what this, okay. the city has had to provide a lot of information for this initial round because of the, the size of the bonds. Uh, these bonds will be sold nationally. Uh, so the city has had to do a lot of groundwork uh, into these four projects to really explain what they are, um, the growth of the city, the, the largest businesses that are in the city, and really try to paint that picture um, of this, the city's growth to, let's say, companies in Chicago or New York, bigger companies that don't know who Horace is. Uh, so that's why this, this temporary bond has taken so long. It's the size of it, the size of your city. Um, so other projects won't be included with that. They're based on the four that we've already. But the groundwork that you've laid for future projects and any yeah. future temporary yeah. bonds will speed that process? It should. It should, hopefully. Because, okay. I mean, it has taken time to try to compile that information. All the, the city's had to provide it. Uh, these guys have all worked really hard on getting that information. We started this, to, what, back in February? Yeah, I think March is when I originally gave them yeah. numbers, but I mean, projects have gone in, projects <coughs> have gone out. Okay. But, uh, yeah, and then we had to get information on the school, and mm -hmm. so they had to provide information. They had to get uh, information from the county on how the county's growth uh, has been over the last like, 10 years. 
there's a lot that, that went into this. Okay. It's almost like a mini comp plan that they needed to see yeah. that so they understood what. But yes, my hope is that with, with future ones that this will help the city and that we have this information already. We know that when they ask these questions, we can provide it. Um, but we haven't really had to do that before because the bond's been sold regionally. So people sure. know that horse is growing really fast. Okay. And so the banks around here are willing to buy those bonds. But by going nationally, we're getting better rates, is what you're stating, correct? The reason that you're going nationally is because of the size. So, oh, okay. Yeah. But yes, hopefully that's that will also true. Okay. Yeah. Be better rates as well. We may have good credit rating. Mm -hmm. We should be able to be, you know, get approved for hopefully some lower interest rates, is what we're hoping. Well, and that's the case about around 3.5. Yeah. So, which is better than 4.25 or yeah. 4.5. So, so what I need from the council is a motion to approve the parameters resolution. <coughs> so this is fairly standard language, per se, for this kind of temporary bonding. <coughs> so where did the $17,500,000 come from? Where, where, what was the magic behind that? Um, I did not ask. I just asked what the, what the cap was um, that they went with. I'm sure it's just a percentage of what the... What the total so cost of what the four projects are, and they just add on to it. Oh, okay. Just give same it. same with the the four point five. So, percent. are you anticipating that this is a resolution that we would have to update annually? This just gets done when you're doing your your bond. Oh, right, but I, I'm just saying because so we're listing because we're listing the projects that we've got this year yep. on the project, you know, on this resolution. Well. The idea would be that they would be closed out by the end of the year. So we're going to have to redo this resolution each year. You'll do this resolution for uh, each time you bond. Each so bond. you could even do this again this year if you're going to be bonding for okay. those for developments. But then it's just basically an update to this resolution to add something to the list. No, I think there's no, separate. Is separate. Yeah. It's separate. Is it just yep. essentially like it's putting a pretty bow on everything so when you're... Uh, you know, trying to sell the bonds. Yes, everybody. I mean, there's the there's a lot of other documents too that they're sending out. Yeah. That's the one that's is the pretty bullet. Really explains what's all going on. This is just uh, okay. the requirement that they have of you need to have this resolution approved by the, the governing body. Okay. So if if the city does more bonding this year, you'll see one of these again. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be With specific different. to that project. Yep. I motion we approve the resolution. Okay. Dave makes a motion. I get a second. There's no worry of like worst case the four and a half percent becomes an issue or something that you know something happens if these parameters aren't met. And that's why you set these parameters at the saying that it won't go over that. Yeah. So what we're stating is if we break these parameters, we have to find another funding method. Correct. Yep. Basically. So we're confident in the parameters. They, yeah, they have not given me any reason to be concerned. Because <coughs> I think what's going to go on, I think Doherty might, I think they buy the bonds, so the, the bonding company, and then they sell them. Oh, they underwrite them, don't they? Yeah. That's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Dave's got a motion on the floor for temporary second. bond. Chelsea a second. And then if we get a roll call this one, Mr. Mayor. Yep, that's what I was going to do. So we'll roll call it. Dave? Yes. Chelsea? Yes. Brian? Yes. Okay. <coughs> okay, Lucas, you got that one. Um, who wants to take the next one first? Brent, you want to handle it? I'll start it and then okay. uh, tag team with Lucas here. Uh, the letter of credit, this is an uh, important phase of any development, any, big, any developments that we have there using special assessments. Letter of credit essentially uh, is assurances or protection for the city on uh, if there is a default by the property owner, developer, landowner, uh, or a builder within a certain time phase of the project, or, or a lot being developed. Um, a lot of time, or what the council has seen recently is to increase the letter of credit to 75% of the total project cost. Uh, there are a few developments that are still at 50, that we're transitioning to that 75% though. One issue that has been brought to our attention is at what point <coughs> the layer of credit should be required. And then the other part of it is uh, 
what we have asked for before was a letter of credit uh, before the project bids out. We asked for that letter of credit, or that way we're able to tell the, the builders giving that, or developers giving the assurances that the funds are being protected. What has been requested though is consideration of having that layer of credit not be based on an estimate, but be based on actual bid amount. So the layer of credit could either be revised at the time of, or between bid opening and bid award, or flat out we just require the layer of credit once we have the bid opening numbers because we have projects that come in high and some that come in low. So we're really refining how much would actually be due for a letter of credit. <coughs> uh, what Lucas and I had been discussing or what we're throwing up is the idea of having maybe like a preliminary or like a pre-approval or a letter of credit flat out approved based on the estimate and then council's willingness to have that number or letter of credit be revised once we have the actual bid numbers. And Lucas could expand on that and try to cover just the basics of it. Um, so, you know, in, in my looking at this from a legal standpoint, the city needs something in place right away. They need a letter of credit. The city is going to go through with this process and, and approve plans and specs and then advertise uh, for bids. There needs to be a letter of credit. So right now your letter of credit requirement is based on the engineer's estimate of uh, probable construction costs. And that's just saying, here's how much we think this project is going to cost. Now the developer is required to provide a letter of credit, uh, and it's now switched to 75% of that number. So the proposal would then say, okay, that's how we're going to start with this, is there's going to be a 75% letter of credit based on the engineer's estimate. Well then, once the city uh, actually receives bids, they're going to be able to determine whether or not the bids came in way lower. If they did, then the city could potentially uh, work with the developer, and the developer can revise the uh, letter of credit requirement to match or to be a percentage of what the actual bids are, the low bid. Um, and then the developer would have to provide that revised letter of credit to the city before the city would actually advertise or uh, accept the bid. But if the developer does not provide the revised letter of credit, before the city awards the bid, the city would use the original letter of credit, which would be the 75% of the, the engineer's estimate. Mm -hmm. So essentially, if the bid comes in high, they're going to stick with the letter of credit they had, and if it comes in low, then they'll revise it. And it's up to the developer to get that letter of credit. The city's not going to do it. So let me ask a question about, let's say a scenario of they get the letter of credit ahead and you know, all the numbers or whatever, and suddenly it comes back and it's tremendously higher. And the developer says, I'm not going to go forward right now with this, and basically pulls mm -hmm. the project because it's just a cost. <coughs> Who pays mm -hmm. for all the work that we've had to do and that kind of stuff for reviewing plans and specs, all those types of things that we had to, is it a, our mm -hmm. uh, plat review costs and those types of things are covered? Through a, uh, uh, your plan review and that stuff is covered with the application fee that they have originally. Okay. Yeah, the application fee. That's yeah. what I, was for. I don't know if that's covering a lot of your your legal expenses or your engineering mm -hmm. expenses that are going into this. It's supposed to, but understand yeah. your man. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if it if it goes if it's too high or if it's a certain percentage over what the engineer's estimate is, the city doesn't award it anyway. Um, mm -hmm. If they it's over, it. they have to rebid it. If it's over, I think thirty percent or. Um, what's the reason for having a letter of credit before the bids are done? What, what's our reasoning for having to have it then? Because by the time you're actually getting the bids and stuff, the city has already started bonding, and I mean that process already starts. So the city doesn't want to get stuck with with doing all that groundwork, legwork, and then all of a sudden the project doesn't go through, and the city has has nothing. Uh, to hold the developer responsible for anything. So, Be because once once you're at that point and you award bids, what's why is the developer going to get a letter of credit? Now you've got the, the bid is award. There's no letter. No, of I'm credit. talking before we award award it. I'm asking. <coughs> it's it's a timing thing. 
it's a timing thing of you're working on this and then you have so many days to actually award the bid. Is the developer going to get the letter of credit in time? I don't know. It depends on the developer. Just to have that security in place so you're not having to advertise for bids and then just sit and wait for that letter of credit to be provided. Yeah, but to me that's the risk that the developer takes that if he doesn't get his letter of credit in time, he potentially loses out on his bid prices. Mm -hmm. It seems like a lot of process to get all this, then go for a you know, review and, and you're also giving them out that if it goes above, they can stick with the current, um, current price. I'd rather just say it's, you have to have it before we award a bid and it's based on the, the bid dollars, mm -hmm. whether it's up or down. saying just moving it further down the process. Right. We know it's required. When we, won't, we won't we award a bid. Numbers. We won't award a bid until we have that. Mm -hmm. And my concern is timing. It gets to be such a push, push, push towards the end. And But if we're up front with everybody, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a check on the checklist. I can't award a contract unless I have that letter of credit. Develop, we're talking about getting developer agreements done earlier and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. That would be the last piece. So do you guys have any issue getting those things at that amount of time? I, Dan Dappert's here, can you give any input? Uh, to your point, once we're uh, getting Dan Dappert to develop for Pub Creek, once it's to that point, it's usually, uh, I suggested even just having like a pre-approval letter so that the, everyone knows that we're at least in track, but this whole thing of going back and forth and getting a, what may be a uh, artificially inflated number by this year because we're seeing such competitive bids mm -hmm. that we can get have to get a, a letter of credit for four dollars, but really it's only required to have it for three dollars. But likewise, it was going the other way. So it, it, if if it gets to that point, um, the developer would know and be able to have it in a short amount of time. It's all this other stuff kind of preloading up for, front to to kind of have it. We're dealing with estimates at this point and it's been a very as you've seen with your projects the prices have been all over the board right so uh, typically in uh, other communities in which we work um, everything has to be in and advertised for bids bids are open it's going to be 50 percent or 75 percent of that amount you have you either have a day or you have a month it's up to the developer to do the letter of credit over but the understanding is there's no letter of credit um, there's no award of bid. So you still get it. You still get the letter of credit, and you can get that letter of credit for a short order. Because by then, you've already had a conversation with the banker anyway but to say, okay, we know the estimate is going to be in this ballpark. We're just waiting for final estimates to <coughs> come in, and then we can nail it down to say, this is what the bid amounts were, and this is where we're probably going to land. Now I need a letter of credit for that. Correct. I think all in all, it's much better to work with real numbers, especially when there's lots of oh, commas and zeros yeah. involved. So all of a sudden, a 20% uh, cushion of another 10% cushion, it gets to be a really big cushion. So I think if um, if it's all the same, the time from the t um, bids are opened, uh, if someone is ready and able to have that from a from a Thursday opening to a Monday council meeting, I've delivered the letter of credit to the council meeting at five o'clock before to make sure we're heard there. If not, it gets delayed two weeks until the next council meeting. I mean, that's a, the that's a point is we don't want to delay the process, you know, to, to say, okay, because we want to keep be able to keep things moving along, but yet getting enough time to be able to get that documentation. So it's, it's a chicken and egg kind of situation, right? Yeah. And, and I guess that's, a, that's the only, if, if we're following a process that's in general, that's the way other communities handle it, right? If, they, if that's the normal procedure is to use the bid amounts for the letter of credit, then why would we be any different? But, I mean, and, and if, if, are, are we any, at any at undue risk? Are we adding any undue risk by waiting till, I mean, it's still before we award a bid, we're not taking on any more risk than what we would have today. So a couple points. One, all the cities in this area are not the same, so they all do stuff different. West Fargo does a promissory note. Uh, I'm not sure what Fargo does. Moorhead does a letter of credit. Um, so they're all different. And Horace is different in that you're a smaller community and you're, you're bonding for quite a bit of money. And so you need to protect yourself financially. That's what the letter of credit uh, well, is I'm doing. Not, I'm not arguing that the other, not do the letter of credit. I'm just yeah. saying the timing of when we get And the, the timing thing is big. So for bonding, the, 
bonding agency, the, the underwriters, they request the developer's agreements or the improvement district agreements and the letter of credit. They want to be able to show that, hey, the, the city's backed financially with this the letter of credit. Well, if you're waiting until bids to get, before you get a letter of credit, you're not gonna get money for, I don't know how long. These, the city is taking eight to 12 weeks to get money. And, but for this last one, I mean, it's even longer than that. So if you're gonna wait that long, that development's gonna be months into construction, the city's not gonna have any money. Yep, and they're gonna wanna get paid. Yeah, it, you know what I mean? They, they need to see that the city is backed with something before they're just gonna buy these bonds. And so that's why I say it's, it's a timing thing. And that's why if you have the, the letter of credit right away based on the engineer's estimate, which we get pretty early, and then revise it once you get the actual numbers, it's, I mean, that's, that's better than than how it is now, I guess. But it's, <coughs> you know, it's unless you can finance these projects while you wait for the for the bond proceeds. <coughs> yeah, we can. And it's, I mean, some of these developments I've worked on, it's weeks before the city gets a letter of credit. So yeah, I mean, they can be obtained relatively quickly, but are they? I guess it comes back to are we communicating clearly? This is the point we want a letter of credit. Are we being consistent? Is what I would come back to, I guess. If we're not, then of course I'm going to be, well, when do you want it? When do you need it? That type of thing. So if our process is clear and we state at this time we need a letter of credit and we're stating we're making a potential change to allow an adjustment to that, yeah. then that's something different. But And it's right in the, the improvement district agreement. So when the city's actually financing these improvements, it's, it's in the agreement. And it says mm -hmm. letter of credit in this amount um, and that's provided during the, the improvement district process. So yeah, I mean, if it's going to hold it up, if you're going to have to wait six, eight weeks for bonding, then... Yeah, I mean, look at this last one. It's even longer than that. What are you going to do? I mean, <coughs> and that's out of the city's hands. I mean, there's nothing... If you're going to be bonding for these projects like that... Well, yeah, we can't... You have to play by their rules. Yeah. You can't wait till a bid is awarded and then wait another two months. Well, if we put, our, put the dates on it and the timing on it give it ranges we can well you as long as we're creating the parameters for a contractor to know when the work is expected to start and if we're saying mm -hmm. it starts eight to ten weeks after award of bid because it takes this amount of time to get funding and that's that's my concern yeah. it's a timing thing i don't want this, this happen to the city Con before. contractors will typically start work they'll start work where whenever you say this work is to start um that's if you have an issue with the bonding side or something like that, you say, okay, this is contingent upon the bonding. It's how you write the contract mm -hmm. that really dictates how that will move forward. Um, but also, they would start at a later date because we typically would tell them a lot of times they want to start right off when the contracts are signed, mm -hmm. but sometimes they don't. They don't hit the floor running right away. And that's just because they may have other work going on or they're getting their materials ordered, things like that. Uh, sometimes it takes a while to get some of the materials on hand before that project starts. Uh, as for the bonding, yes, sometimes it'll take a while. You know, this one that we're working on, it's a fairly good sized bond. It's more robust. Uh, the city didn't have a lot of the information up front for the bonding requests, like the basic sell the city. So that does take longer. Are we more prepared now for another bond, say later in the year? Yeah, we are. Can we guarantee it's going to be quicker or not? No, we can't. But we're in a better position because we have that information. Uh, we know that information coming up in the future to where hopefully, I'm going to say hopefully, is uh, we'd be able to answer those questions a lot quicker based on staffing improvement, you know, actually having more staff that can help answer those questions, get that information available to them right off the bat. But it does take a while as of right now. So, but we are looking for, you know, getting the council's opinions on when we should have this letter of credit because it has been up for discussion internally for a while. And <coughs> we are working on updating when items are due 
when are they being processed for developments such as a developer's agreement we'd like to have that developer's agreement ready and pretty much agreed to at the time of final plat so you have that just knocked out now if we have a layer of credit required at the same time we want to be able to require that up front if it's a matter of having one like a preliminary one and then have a final one or a preliminary one just after the plat and a final one at the time of the bid open to suggestions or open to where the council will want to go a lot of well, the, the difference is if, if there, when you say preliminary you either have a letter of credit for a certain amount or you don't or you can I mean, have there, like, there's no such thing from yeah. a bank standpoint this yeah no well we'll kind of cover yeah. this amount no you either have it or you don't you could get i believe you could probably get a pre like a pre-approval saying are you even qualified to be able to get that that's the big question or anything so, beyond so that can we or do you have a statement because there from is the a developer. cost right there is a cost associated with saying if i need a, a two million dollar letter of credit yep. versus a one million dollar letter of credit the cost to get that letter of credit <coughs> is different yep you incur more two. cost so therefore i mean if if there's a way that we could say if that that preliminary stage if there's a an ability does that is there a cost to get that mm -hmm. You know, we've done the due diligence. The bank has said they're, they're, we've done the due diligence, and they can be letter credit up to a certain amount without having to incur that cost. Yep. So if I Don, you have just may use myself as an example, because I'm aware of some projects that have gone to bid, not awarded, that still don't have a letter of credit and are included in a bonding district. I myself have supplied a letter from a, the bank saying, "Tell us what amount, real amount it is, and we'll then we'll fill in the amount, but it's pre-approved." Or there's a, a letter of credit for X amount of dollars, but it's kind of the chicken or the egg. So we need to have a, a plot really approved, and we have to have an improvement district, and we need to know real numbers as to what it's going to cost. Because yeah, there's a, a, a significant cost to just have an abundance of caution right. for an extra half million dollar letter well, of credit. Well, that's what I'm needed. saying. If there's a if there's this pre-approval to say you're pre-approved up to a certain amount, right, and we make that the requirement at the plot approval stage. So we can say, okay, now, now there, you haven't incurred the cost at that point, but yet you're pretty confident that the bank has said, yes, we can give you this amount, but we really don't know what the real numbers are. I, I'd equate it kind of to the process that goes through for the plot. We have our preliminary plot, and then we have our review, and, and get, until it's final, final plot approval, right? It's still it's still a little fluid. Right. We're pretty, pretty sure it's going to be where it is, but it could, you know, add a lot, for example, or something. Uh, but uh, you know, so I, I think there just needs to be some um, things in place, some good faith if, uh, between both the developer and the city that we can get there. And to Lucas's point, it's nice to get that process started earlier. <coughs> on. Um, but to your point, would you be out any more or less money? Well, it could really, if the bids just came in too high and the whole thing got pulled, then it'd be I, just like if the developer was unable to perform on that letter of credit, the same thing could be there. So I think right. you probably want to have some reasonable assurances that the developer is financially wherewithal to be able to deliver the letter of credit. Once, for and example, plat or some, some point when those well, bids. we'd like to have those engineers estimates there so that we can kind of have something there. But more importantly, I think it's always going to be different because every year the environment is different of <laughs> nature and even every bid is different. Some right. are going to come in smoking low and some are going to be like what were they this is only for one development not right. two right so um i think it's a matter of timing that together but having the, the staff have a, a reasonable assurances that they can convey with the developers agreement or everything else but basically we just would like to do the developer agreement for what we need and not for because we only have another opportunity in six months to revise that amount so i think it makes sense that we get it to where it just up or down but it, at least the letter of credit is for the 50 or 75 percent of the actual number, the bid, not just the estimate. So there is a way to revise the number. The bank does give you the ability to revise the number if it if it comes in lower. They could, yeah, yeah, exactly. So and that's will, why will they give you money back if they charge you too much? I don't know. I've, I've, I've not been through it. I don't know yeah. how the banks do that. No, it's just a one way street. You just <laughs> give them, yeah. The banks but, fake and. Right, yeah. but then the city, <coughs> as Lucas mentioned, in the developer's agreement that's laid out where uh, in six months it can be revised and then they would you know, lower down with some of those conditions are met. So let's just say if it was a, you know, a factor of 50% or 25%, that abundance of abundance of caution would be there until the six month and then it could get re 
repriced essentially. So well, I guess we're gonna go round and round, so it's probably we need a at least a, at some point define that we need an initial and then just mm -hmm. as you said, give them the flexibility to adjust the final award mm -hmm. once you know the numbers. So you learn and we should come back and review it six months once we've gone through it a few times. So you want a letter of did you want you want some or, more definition on emotion with this, Lucas? I mean, I, mean, we I think it would it would help. Um, currently, the six month review is within pretty much any developer's agreement that we do. Correct. So that is covered already. It's the at what level of protection do you want? What information do you want? Do you want to have that letter of credit up front based on estimate, and then it could be revised? based on the actual bid. Would you like to have a layer credit solely based on the engineer's estimate and then whatever it bids at, high or low, the developer has to wait until after that six months of the developer agreement to be able to revise anything? Um, or do you want to have some sort of pre-approval or something of that nature from for the developer at, based on the estimate, and then you could have a actual letter of credit from at, with the numbers based on the bid. So you have a letter of credit based on the bid. Right. So pre-approval work for bonding. Uh, yeah, that's, I don't just because you can bond know. for a certain amount doesn't yeah. mean that you're actually gonna get it. So I don't agree with with mm -hmm. that method. Yeah. You, you so, know what I mean? Just because you can do it doesn't you, mean you're going to do it. Yeah. So as a developer, would you rather get um, your letter of credit and have to end up waiting two months for bonding to go through, or would you rather get it earlier and then have to? Um, well, I'm just curious, for example, I mean, take Cub Creeks as, as this, what will the difference be? Because the letter of credit is here today, we're going to hopefully move to advertise for plans or bids and specs. I mean, I just don't know what. <coughs> when do we require it right now? What's our process? Is at the time, really it's, there isn't a defined, it's the layer credit is. Basically a checklist item. A have checklist this item. The city will proceed with bonding. Yep. If the city doesn't have it, they're not going to go forward with bonding. It's yep. just a part of our checklist. We don't okay. have a defined but, but time. Where does that checklist, where does that checklist have to be before we move on? I don't plan up. Right. What you're trying well, to say. Okay, so so there's platting and then there's the actual improvement district. Right. So the city has been has been doing the platting to ensure mm -hmm. that there's actually a development to do this, and then it starts with the improvement district process. So when we start that improvement district process, we're getting the a draft of the improvement district agreement to the developers so they can see here's what the city has laid out, and then it brings <coughs> to the council, say council, here's the ID agreement we have for this. But at that point, we still don't have. Wave your wand, give your blessing. Do we have, do we have um, engineering estimates yet? At that point, yeah, we do or we don't. So that's we sh we do have them during that process, and that's once we have those, then I can put them into the agreement. But we need those those costs, so I can put them in the agreement. So that to me is kind of my trigger is when we have those costs. Okay, so I know we're getting down into really really detail, but at that point, we're not even thinking about bonding yet, are we? We're just starting to. Or we're we're thinking about bonding well ahead of time, but we're pulling the triggers <coughs> once the improvement districts are being established. That's when we're starting to really pull the triggers. And for I mean, bonding. you can go pretty quick with these developments with mm -hmm. the improvement districts if you don't have the resolution of necessity where you're having to publish in the paper for thirty days. So if you don't have to do that, which for the new developments you don't, because you typically get the petition for <coughs> improvements, it goes pretty quick. And so we're trying to get the all the resolutions done. Check, check, check. Get those numbers for the, the actual cost of the project. Then we're sending the agreement. And so, I mean, it's it's that window of when you're actually doing the improvement district from the start of the resolution to create the district. We're working on the, the ID agreement for that. And then, as soon as we get the numbers, uh, provide them, we review it internally, send it to the developer, and then the city council gets to review it. And I would guess we do it after you get numbers, after you get. You know, information that information to the developer, it. and we do an initial letter of credit at that point. But I think we need to have the, and all, we're all talking about because it goes down. 
I think we need to have it because it could go up too, and it could go up within five to ten percent. The developer moves forward. We need to adjust that letter of credit as well. Right. It goes both ways. It goes both ways. Yep. Generally, it's going to be hopefully down for to, everybody. To give you an idea, we've had three different bids happen this year, mm -hmm. and there two came in significantly under. We're talking one point three million, one point eight million. The third one came in about two hundred thousand over. So it can't go either way. The one that came in over was for a development. Yep. So, and that one, have not heard anything on a layer of credit yet for that one. That one likely is going to be frozen or tabled again, or if they're if we're even going to be able to accept the bids because we don't have that. In place. So I guess mine would be typically a bid process is minimum thirty days, right, Jim? For holding of the bid? No, for actually posting and passing uh, the out. If it's special assessment, it's 14, two publications in 14 days. Two publications in 14 days. Yeah, it works out to be like 18 days between you know, meetings. So I would say. But my, my issue with the timeline of all this is you can't really do a timeline because it's so dependent on, on engineering, it's dependent on the developer responding to you, and so to actually set okay, it's not, it's not. I'm not stating it's a timeline. I'm stating it's a what has been done. So it's a process, and we're looking through the process and where we're at in the process. And so you're talking about the improvement district, yep. and you're talking about getting ready to prepare bids and do all that kind of stuff. What is the stuff that needs to be done at that point and to the city so that we can go to the next step? So it's a gate. It's a, yeah. it's, a, it's a stage gate. We can't get through without these things. And to me, it's at the point of the developer, you know, the developer agreement, the final plat, whatever <coughs> that is, and we got the improvement districts, we got all those things. That's where I've... You guys got to tell us where that actually is. What is that point? That's yeah, the point we need to find. And so here, so we'll let, we can walk through with our resolutions. So we have the resolution to create the district. Yep. Now we have the resolution directing the engineer to prepare a report. Yep. Resolution accepting the engineer's report. So at that time, the engineer knows the cost of this project and the preliminary cost. So then he's providing me with that number, and I can start on the improvement district agreement. And then it's providing it to the developer at that point, providing it to the city for the internal review. Um, and then it's resolution directing the engineer to prepare plans and specs, and then your resolution to approve plans and specs, advertise for bids. So it's in that, that period after the, the engineer prepares the report, so we actually have numbers, and then before the, the resolution advertising the bids. Okay, so, so I mean, I mean, to there, me it's there's, before there's advertising the bids. Yeah. So it's before advertising the bids, we have the initial, and then potentially we allow after bid acceptance, or bids, Provide it, we can they can adjust up or down. Does that seem decent? That's kind of what we were talking about. Yeah. Sorry if it went round and round. <laughs> Make sure we talk about it so everybody knows what we're trying to it's do. It's just here. it's basically right now what what we're gonna be asking you then is is that how you want to do it where it's an initial and then they can revise it? Or do you want to keep it where it's how we've been doing it, where it's just the initial based on the, the preliminary numbers and then just no, I, I, I'm, you know, we're having a good year, but we've seen it go completely the other way, and I want to guard us both directions. Well, yeah, I think if we just have the initial estimate and keep it, then the developer, when the bid comes in way lower, they're going to probably be frustrated. Right. So then it just has to go either way, right. and it doesn't sound like there's any other good way but to have an initial um, approval. So I think that's, yeah. And then give the option at point of yeah. bid that can be adjusted again. Yeah. Well, is it an option or just No, it is. It is. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Sorry. Wrong term. <laughs> it is reviewed and either adjusted, is adjusted if needed at point of acceptance of bids. Okay. So put that into a motion. A motion that we require a letter of credit prior to award. Uh, what was your um, resolution to bid the project, right? Well, I, it's either res before the resolution to advertise for bids or it's before the resolution approving plans and specs. We typically do those two uh, the same night. Well, if they have to get it, what difference does it make at plans what specs point then. It, well, what I would suggest is just prior to the bid. That way, if you have a situation where you can still move forward of advertising for bid, contingent, I hate to do contingency on this, mm -hmm. but if you say... They can do that. We prefer to have it beforehand, but before it can be bid, that layer credit has to be in the city's hand. That gives some flexibility where you're able to still move forward, mm -hmm. but it, the city has the, hey, we're not going to kick out that bid and advertise it for bid until you do it. Right. So it gives some 
leeway to work around. Okay. So yeah, I motion that we require our letter of credit, initial letter of credit prior to bid and allow, not allow, at the point of bid review, it is reviewed and adjusted based on actual numbers. Okay. Well, you the, the, the letter of credit amount is reviewed. Right, the letter of credit amount is reviewed based on the actual dollars right. from the bids. All right. Second. Yeah. We've got a motion on the table. Chelsea's got a second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, that was unanimous. All right. Okay, Lucas, so you get that in the books then. And Get that squared away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Matt, you're up next here. Maple Lakes Final Plat. Planning Commission recommends approval of Maple Lakes Final Plat. Uh, the only non administrative difference between the preliminary and the final plat is we adjusted uh, the corner lots to be compliant with our 10 foot side setback corner lots. Uh, everything else was administrative. Uh, the developer has begun uh, Clomar F, which is the type of floodplain review required by FEMA for this property. Um, that has begun. Um, as our last conversation has suggested, what, what staff will recommend is uh, just table the approval of this until the developer's agreement and all the other parts of that are, are hammered out. Um, the Clomar F takes approximately 40 days anyways. So in terms of um, what the timeline looks like from the city's perspective, not much has changed. So if we wait to uh, approve this uh, final plat once all the other documents are in place, you know, that's a step towards what we are just talking about. So. That's stated here that we have a public hearing. Do we we'll have to do because public it was hearing posted? first, right? right? Mm -hmm. That's okay. just my memo. Yep. yep. Okay, so we'll open up for public hearing on the Maple Lakes edition. Does anybody have any comments or I want to say about that. Going once, going twice. Okay, now I'll close the public hearing. Do you need a motion to table it? Yeah, I suppose you could, that's what you want to do is table the rest of this discussion. It would be our recommendation, then. Let's be consistent with what we just talked about. Yeah. So can you state what it would be because of the... We just want to see a completed developer agreement. Okay. Motion we table this until we uh, have a complete developer's agreement. Okay, so Dave makes a motion. That well, this one has an improvement district agreement because the city's going to be funding this one. So, I mean, there's more of a process left. Is this improvement district agreement? Yeah. Okay, so we want the improvement district agreement. We'll table it until that happens. Is that will be okay? Yeah, I don't think it's, I don't know if we're ready for it anyways. Your motion? As edited as, <laughs> as, as, as noted. Done. Okay. <laughs> Dave makes a motion, can I get a second? Second. Okay, Brian is a second. Okay, all in favor of that, say aye. Aye. Um, all right, so we'll have a table that then until we get the improvement district together. All right, on to the next one. Matt, you got 15 two here. The next one is Hess First Subdivision. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hess are in the audience tonight. Um, there's approximately 10 acres and they wish to subdivide it into five lots of various sizes. Um, this is in the far north east corner of the city, right up against Drain 27 and just south of the Fargo city limits. Um, this application has, uh, there's two steps required here. There's a replat and, or actually a, a plat, this is unplatted, so a, a first plat and a rezone. Uh, Planning Commission has recommended approval of this and there's a list of contingencies that I'll read to you. Um, all five lots should be rezoned to R1. Uh, remove, uh, upon your approval, the preliminary plat, uh, they'll go and uh, enter discussion with the fire district to ensure that the hammerhead on that private road can accommodate the turning radius of all frontline fire apparatus. Uh, number three is uh, the city would like to see an intent to serve letter from CAS rural water users. Number four, the proposed access road is built at a minimum 20 feet wide. Number five is street lights. Number six is street trees are added to comply with our street tree ordinance. 
Um, and number seven is that septic system shall have the ability to connect with the urban system when uh, connection is available. So uh, there's two components to this, right? One of them is the rezone. Uh, one of them is the approval or denial of the final plat, of the preliminary plat. Okay. All right, we'll open up the public hearing on the S first edition. Anybody have anything they want to talk about with that? Okay. Going once, going twice. Okay, then I'll close the public hearing. All right. Anybody got any discussion they want to talk about on this one? Matt, you got anything else you want to? The re are we on the rezone or the preliminary? No, we're on the preliminary. 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 Okay, yep. then not yet. Okay. Plan and zoning has reviewed it. Seems like they yep. provided a pretty specific list. Mm, yeah, often <coughs> with these smaller subdivisions, you you get there's often more to do at the front end, just because the subdivider is not a developer. So. Okay. Do we want to approve the? Uh, First edition of preliminary plat. So moved. Oh. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I'm not going to run all of them tonight. Yeah. Mm. Brian, okay. We'll make a second on that one. I'll second it. Okay. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Carries. Okay. That's first edition of the rezone. Same? Same. I would like to make a comment about why uh, the developer, the subdivider, is pursuing R1. Um, there's a couple different uh, directions that staff could have advised him to go. Uh, having a, a blanket R1 rezone on this, I think, helps create uh, a standard for how we handle subdivisions at the corners of the city. Um, R1 is, is uh, the, the most dense zone that we have that can accommodate an acre residential lot. And so what this is, is it kind of sets a fringe standard. So uh, things denser than R1 in places in the city that uh, ought to not have, you know, more, you know, denser type subdivisions, it creates, you know, a bigger public process for that, whereas we can still support acre lots on the edge of town. So that's why uh, uh, staff advised uh, the subdivider and subdivider move forward with uh, rezoning the whole thing R1. Um. Okay. All right, I'll open up for a public hearing on the first edition of the rezone. Anybody got any? I got a question. Go. Is, so is the subject of park dedication? It is. is. And he's, he's aware, and that's good. that has to happen. That's why it's not on a condition, because it has to happen. Yeah. Okay. So. Because I talked to Wade earlier today, and we'd probably just take cash and funnel it towards the largest facility um, mm -hmm. that's a different part of that development for the section of homes. Yeah, I can I can understand that. No, you don't want, you don't want to park, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to clarify because the email that you sent to Wade earlier, so yeah. Yeah, I don't. Mm, but trying you're to just there's no pre-development meeting for sub subdivision. No, this this came before we initiated those, and I didn't want to list things <coughs> that have to happen anyways on the conditions of approval. So, okay. So the park board will have to provide a recommendation letter to the planning commission for this. Okay. Anybody else have any comments you want to make on the public hearing side of this? Okay. All right, I will close the public hearing. All right, do um, you guys have any questions or comments on this one? No. Anything else, Matt, that you want to so share? This is basically, this is the existing. Yeah, so yeah. we've updated how we do staff reports. And uh, we want to make sure that you have all the, you know, as much information as we can provide. And it's pretty standard to have, you know, what's existing in terms of zoning and land use and you know, what it could be or what the application is asking it to be changed to. So right now, all these are zoned agriculture. Right now, the whole thing is, yeah. So 
make a motion to approve the rezoning. Okay. Brian makes a motion to approve the rezoning. Second. Rezone. Can't do one without the other. Chelsea does a second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Motion carries unanimously. <coughs> Call me tomorrow, Joe, and we'll start the next steps. <laughs> <laughs> next. <laughs> next. <laughs> Okay, Lucas, you're up on shift. <laughs> uh, I would recommend that we table it until we get that letter of credit. This is for this, though. Okay. How long have the bids been out now? Uh, if we wait till the next meeting, it'll be 30 days, so we're right up against our window. I called him today. He said he was going to call me within a half hour regarding the letter of credit. Never called <coughs> as long as he's aware. And I did, I did text him also. Uh, a little while ago, and no response. And I met with him last week. Yeah. Okay. So. so, if we're waiting for stuff, and but it's on the agenda, and you're recommending tabling it, um, I guess I'm not understanding really why it's on the agenda. I provide the agenda it, items yeah. in advance. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are still waiting for that layer of credit. Give them the most. Today. Give them the most amount of time. Hey. We're waiting for that item, so if you was to give it to us, then we would have been able to continue. Yeah. Uh, ideal situation, we wouldn't even put it on there, but <coughs> this one, okay. it's down to the wire, and we want trying to keep it move forward. Yeah. Now, okay, I, I assume he's going to be here today. I completely understand that, and I completely understand trying to be working with mm -hmm. developers and citizens and all those types of things, but. We're trying to put in place a process that we're able yep. to view this information. So, as Chelsea said, she could have reviewed some information, be prepared, and that kind of stuff. And now our table, I kind of agree with her. Our date is our date. If it's the Wednesday before a meeting, if it's the Tuesday, the Monday, whatever it is, if we can't get those things together, then we shouldn't put them on the agenda. We got to get to that point. Otherwise, we're always jockeying and we're always trying and we're always doing this. Mm -hmm. So, I'd rather be this is the day and we're all on that. Everyone included ourselves. Yep. If we put something in Tuesday, you guys should say no. So I think we need to move towards that. I think most of the time we're there, but there are going to be some things that come up at the last. And I know. But I, why? I, I we, we have, we have communication. Talking. Yeah, it seems yeah, it does right. seem a lot. We have communications, and we're trying to put these things in place. And I know so we all done. Nice. Yeah, we, we. I mean. If it was six weeks before we meet again, I can understand that, but we're meeting in two weeks again, so. Okay. Uh, it's just my feedback mm -hmm. along with Chelsea. I agree with her. Okay. <laughs> in the meantime, though, I'm going to table this, so I need I think, a motion. Yeah, I think it just, you get caught off guard a little bit and you don't really know how to handle it. I recommend we table this. You know, it's no. just kind of. Mm -hmm. Yep. So motion to yeah. the topic. Also, <coughs> okay, Brian makes a motion to table. Second. Second. Dave. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, we'll table that for the next time. Okay, so number 16, Lucas. Okay. I think Brian's going to start oh, with this one. Okay. It'll, it'll be both. Um, for Cub Creek, we have a variety of different items before you. Uh, what The first item is the Improvement District Agreement. Uh, this will probably be the meat and potatoes of the discussion. However, uh, the proposed improvement district agreement should be on there. Uh, it would be labeled ID agreement WSSST ID number 2019 6. Should be on here. Uh, third from the top. Here, there. Oh, here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, right there. Within this idea agreement, uh, council did, even after they approved moving forward with doing a 75% layer of credit, this is one of the developments that was uh, allowed to be 50% layer credit. The reason why is this development, uh, the logic behind it was this development was already through quite a bit of the process, the planning process, uh, and special assessment development, pro or the process for special assessments. Uh, so council did agree to move forward of having a developer's agreement reflect 
the I met with the developer last week to discuss this developer's agreement and what you do have included in this as proposed is a fifth or fifty percent letter of credit. There are the ponds where there be the pond purchase for Cub Creek, the overall development as a whole, but the city would purchase ponds at 1.5 million. That was not to be included within the layer credit calculation. Uh, we also met, uh, Jim, your engineer and I met with uh, the developers, engineer and himself to discuss the actual project cost to make sure the estimate was truly correct. You know, were they comfortable with the numbers in there? Now, when they hashed out the number, or they went through those numbers, then the engineer went through and did the standard approach that we have within developer agreements or any project we do, adding in uh, the contingencies and then also the project costs that are outside of the actual construction. So you have engineer, legal, admin, the variety of those. Uh, that got once you go through the math, it comes out to 8.925 million for the pond purchase, construction, and that is with the alternate bid of a concrete road, or concrete roads within that development. At the minus 1.5 million, and then 50%, it comes out to a letter, letter of credit requirement being 3,712,500. Another item within this developer's agreement that is different than previous agreements that we've done is to have a sunset. So once 90% of the lots are developed, the remaining 10%, the letter credit requirement will go away. Uh, typically when you have a development that far along, there are the developers if they're on to their second, if they have a second edition, they're typically on to their second edition pretty quick after that or before that point. Um, but there would be a little risk tied to the city, but nowhere near the risk that you have initially up front. Uh, those lots are still subject to special assessments. If it defaults, if it's passed at 10%, then they would go through the county's process for. Uh, default payment of special assessments um, but those are the differences from when this original developers agreement was first presented to the city uh, and like I said it's what is being proposed to council for consideration uh, the developer is here to discuss any items I know there were some concerns about the letter of credit um, and then also if we have any other if you like I said if you have any other questions or Concerns tied to this developer's agreement. We answer those. Did, you, did I miss anything from your side? Okay. I don't have any. Developer uh, was given a list of projects. This was on the agenda at the last council meeting, uh, but it was tabled because there are a variety of outstanding items. However, the developers worked uh, to get those items accomplished. Uh, some of those were working out agreements with or, uh, easements and uh, agreement with Casper Water, uh, Southeast Cass. The city with this the letter of credit and also the um, developers agreement so they have my understanding they've been able to complete those <coughs> items so. Mm -hmm. yeah so there's still other items that that need to be uh, checked off the list before the city can proceed this agreement is by far the biggest issue because you're now taking off 1.5 million dollars from the letter of credit requirement so just so you're aware that calculation be taken out. So the city's risk here is taking a letter of credit in the amount of three million seven hundred twelve thousand five hundred dollars to cover a approximately nine million dollar project. That's my concern to you to protect the city financially. Is that letter of credit sufficient for your comfort level? So if you take uh, the eight point nine two five 
times 50%, like you had originally proposed in your first agreement, uh, that letter of credit would be in the amount of $4,462,500. And with this calculation now, with it being taking off the pond lots, um, that's the number that you get. Another proposal is if you are taking off the pond lots, so taking off $1.5 million, taking that amount times uh, 75% or times 0.75, uh, and that would be $5,568,750. So that 75% is what you're doing for your new developments. Yeah. One thing to keep in mind too, when council agreed to do the pond purchase, that was not defined of, we, we really didn't define if the letter credit would be applicable to the ponds or not. I think there are assumptions both ways, and well, it was included yep. in the yeah. So it, it's a question of does the council want to proceed with what is proposed before? Would you like to have modifications done to that? Uh, like some developers available here, uh, there you know Lucas did point out that there is that one five one point five million that is not covered on the letter of credit. Uh, when you compare like infrastructure projects like what we're doing right now at 76 and roundabout, that does not have a letter, require, letter of credit requirement because it's not a development driven project. Mm -hmm. So that is the difference between <clears throat> these projects. So you're almost, you can almost say this is like a hybrid. You could look at it that way. I'm not saying it's a say all, but you could look at it that way. Um, it implements a vision of what the council wants to do um, or has asked for with the ponds, but at the same time, like I said, there's that risk reward. What well, what is in what's the ownership. sweet spot? We're taking over ownership of both pond lots anyway. Yes. Right? So there are, in some regards there's really no assessment. Yes. That would, well there would be assessment related to those bonds. The assessments there those ponds would likely not have assessments on them. The cost for those ponds would be assessed within the improvement district, which is roughly, I mean, it, it has a, the improvement district. Keep in mind, it could be a smaller area, but the improvement district for that pond purchase or that area was about three quarters of that entire section. Right. And that three quarters section is pretty much all the undeveloped land within there. So. But who is the current owner of that land? Oh, it would be the developer owns. Less than half of it. Okay. Yep, just just a little under half or a little under half. Uh, the Catholic Diocese owns yeah. the majority of the remaining portion. Yeah. Uh, my understanding is that land was up for bid. The bids were due last week, and so the Catholic Diocese is working with through a procurement or a process of potentially selling that land. Uh, I don't. I haven't heard any update of if they've shortlisted the developers or if they've selected one developer in particular, I have not heard anything different. Have you heard anything done, Steve? No. So I, but I assume that will be developing over the next couple of weeks, is my assumption. And, and like Brent said, the improvement district boundary is larger than the actual lots or yeah. land that's going to get assessed. Mm -hmm. It's going to kind of come down to whether you guys are all comfortable with the letter of credit as it stands right now with the, the total cost of the development that's going to be taking place um, here. Here again, we've, we've been inconsistent with applying the letter of credit on the lot, many of the developments so far, right? I mean, we, we haven't used a letter or required a letter of credit to many of the developments that are even in process now. All, all they the they are required to do developments. Yeah. This, this was something done, I believe. Was it Prairie View was the first one, or it, it, was, it wasn't in years ago? But yeah. yeah, the newer one or the ones over the past couple of years have been. The only thing that we've done recently is we went from fifty percent to seventy five percent. That's what we did here about yeah. a month ago or so. To raise it to that, so the city is <coughs> more protected. Yep. The lots will be our property. The pond lots would be. Yeah, it's the, 27 the pond acres. Lots are our property. So that if would the be the city's fills, property. Those are our, that's the our city property. owns that property. No matter what. Yes. Whereas the letter of credit would go towards. Yeah. 
Yeah. Correct. The question is how do you pay for them? Because they're going to be paid for by assessments, not by the city. Yeah. But they're spread out over those lots. Yeah. And you know, the whole 6,600 acres, not the 90 acres that we're doing right now. That's why the assessment district is so large. Correct. We don't know how much of that's actually going to get benefit, though. I don't know what's yeah. training. So just because the improvement district boundary is 600 acres doesn't mean 600 acres is getting an assessment. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Another thing to think about, too, is when the ponds get developed, when they actually get constructed. That's right now kind of open ended. Right. Yep. Thoughts, Dave? <laughs> is there, can we? I, I, we yep. To me, we've talked about this. This is a. We have a vision of what we're trying to do to promote Horus and where we're trying to go. And this is a, you know, this is something we want to do. There is potential risk, but the statement is, is that, and I don't know the numbers, but I believe you have a significant portion of your current first phase potentially spoken for. And if we're already looking at the diocese land is potentially spoken for, you know, we're talking <coughs> within the next three to four years, that area will be developed. It's the most mm -hmm. prime in our city right now for development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think it's fair to just assess Cub Creek Correct. first edition for all the ponds. Nope. The only, I mean, if there was some assessment, it should be that percentage of the entire area that's using the pond. That would be the only fair way to do it, if at all. Yes. Okay. okay. So, uh, get a motion then to approve the district agreement. Uh, you guys comfortable with that? I'll make a motion to approve the district. I'll second that. Approve the I'll second that. Okay. Brian makes a motion. David a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Okay. All right. Amending the engineering engineer's report. The next item, I'll introduce this in Jim or Lucas, you guys expand it. Uh, the engineer's report, when this was first developed, or going through the, the special assessment process, going through our checklist of the different uh, layers, the engineer's report reflected the project cost to be right around the six and a half million range. Is that correct, Jim? Yep. Uh, as you can tell, the engineer's estimate has been updated to 8.9. That's including the pond. So your engineer estimate is right around at seven and a half million dollars. Uh, so we're looking for, and Jim could elaborate on the details tied to it, but uh, approving an amended engineer's report uh, for this project. For this so we were provided the quantities and the costs based upon the uh, original design by the design engineers. We took those numbers. Reviewed them, reviewed the quantities, and added the soft cost typically applied to a city project, 10% for construction only for the engineering legal end, like we talked about earlier. So added the million and a half into there for um, the land acquisition through the special assessment district. Uh, through further design, uh, the design engineers came back with a much more expensive project cost. And it, when it gets to be in the millions of dollars of range, it's best to come back and have the report reviewed and amended by the city. So um, I know that the, Steve did an analysis on the original estimate versus the latest one. So I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit, Steve, or if you want to. The short answer is the original estimate didn't include street lights, didn't include under drains on the side of the gravel subbase on the road. Uh, earth work ended up being substantially more than anticipated. It was a big thing, right? Yeah, the, earth, the site does have uh, the east third, roughly. Yep. requires quite a bit of fill to get it up out of the floodplain. So uh, there was quite a bit of excavation factor into that. And uh, like Steve said, there were some other incidental items. So. It's not, well, it, it's a bit unexpected. <coughs> It required more detailed analysis before. I mean, I mean, it was a further review that basically came up with that 
It was during the plan preparation when they when it came up. When you have actual actual numbers versus just kind of laying things out, and getting that. So I guess the, 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 the follow-on question then is, what are the chances that this could happen again? I mean, it's, I mean, we're talking eight point whatever million. I mean, is it going to go up to nine point six? So, you know, what, what's so I went through all the numbers and I looked back at the last three or four that we bid, including. 76 roundabout, Lakeview, 79, 63rd, and Vistos, and Terra Gardens. But matter, I went back with Terra Gardens, and there's a lot of consistency amongst these numbers. There are some that are a little bit higher than what we have seen in the past, and there's some that are a little bit lower. I anticipate those balancing out. So, um, no, I think that this is, from what I've seen, I, think it's, I don't think you're going to see millions of dollars. Um, right now, the schedule, the plan is to try to construct this all this year. That could potentially raise some of the construction prices. I don't know for sure, but it's something to think about. Because of the lack of lack of availability of the builders that would uh, timing do the contractors to do the work and time. timing. Timing, I think time would be a lot of it, especially if the funds are going to be available. For <coughs> this, right, considerable all time. Uh, if this does get approved tonight and uh, authorize the auditor to advertise for bids, the plan is to open bids on. July 11th with an award on the 15th. So those are number of days that are quickly approaching. So. Okay. Any other discussion or so we want to make a motion? Motion we approve the uh, amended engineering report. Okay. Dave makes a motion and a second. Second. Chelsea does a second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Thanks for Declaration of official intent. Who's got that? Lucas, that's here. I think we did this already. I think you tabled. We tabled all items on it. There is one you did. Hold on. Did we do that one? Okay. One of those. We could. Uh, if you want to jump to D, we could jump to D when that looks up. Yeah, the plans and specs. Uh, yeah. Resolution declaring petition for improvement procedures. So we did do it. Yeah. No, okay, that was knocked no, off. I declaration of official oh, you did nope. this 14A was done. Yeah, I need 14B. So we have been working with the design engineer on reviewing the plans of designation. We've had multiple meetings with them. I have reviewed them. They reviewed them. We've gotten comments, sat down with comments to the uh, to the designers, and everything. We have comments are either being addressed or have been addressed. I have no concerns with them in their state. Okay. Motion to approve the final specifications. Second. Okay. Brian does a motion, Dave does a second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. Do we need C? Yep. Pretty. <coughs> I'm not sure if they have access to that resolution. This is a resolution we've done for other yeah, that developments on, that you said is a statement we have to do for yeah. that. <coughs> just says that if the, if the city uses any money on this, that it will reimburse itself when it gets uh, funding for, for the project. Same as the uh, previous yep. council meeting, so you could, maybe we could look at it from the last Yeah, we did this. Yeah, it, it, you have it. It's on the Yeah, I'm looking for it here. I mean, I took one couple of times. Yeah, I same, same yeah. I mean, it's just. I'll make a motion uh, for bringing a uh, declaration of official intent. Okay. Chelsea makes a motion. Second. A second. Brian does a second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. And the last one that we have is approval directing the auditor to advertise for bids. So on this one, I think that there's items that need to be complied with before the city will approve this one. One being there is a, um, a notice to cease and desist and trespass on the property. The city or anyone that works for the city is not permitted to enter onto that property. Uh, the developer filed that against the city uh, last week or the week before. Um, so we need that to be rescinded, which has not been done yet. We need a signed improvement disagreement, which you just approved tonight, and then a letter of credit, which you stated tonight that you need the letter of credit before. The city will advertise for bids. But they were able to do that in contingent. The final letter of credit was once the bids were open, so you know what it was. You have a draft agreement based on the engineer meeting. I have 
two hours on Friday, a 3.4, and then it came back at 3.7 today. So the, the draft is there. As soon as someone knows what the real number is, or and these numbers were changed many times in the previous weeks, so it's not the city that has been changing these numbers. Well, when I meet with the city on Friday for two hours to discuss what number is going to be, and then I'm recording it with them, it's 3.30? This was your request. Your request to, yeah. was to revise this, right. which I did, and I got it done today. So yes, this was done. This was all provided late. The city has revised this agreement many times between then and now. And we have provided it to the developer as requested. So it's it's up to the council. There's no letter of credit right now. Mm -hmm. Do we have an initial letter of credit or no? Because the numbers changed. I know, but we have an initial for three point four, four million. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what what does it matter then if the numbers change? If they're going to change it anyway. That is up to the council if you want to accept it or accept that or not. The developer's agreement says the 3.7 thing, but the number could change. So it's up to the council if you want to accept it at that different amount. Because we, so that original one was done when the project cost $6,577,000 at 50%. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's changed. It's now almost in, it's 8.925. Million dollars. But what with do we the, have as a the, current the letter of credit oh. first time around? What's the amount? Based on the developer's agreement, it was a 3.7 amount. What was uh, that was a refined amount based on the review from the engineer on the probable costs. Mm -hmm. Was discussed with the developer where we left off was at 3.4. That number had contingencies in different areas reflected. So my understanding is the developer has a letter of credit for 3.4 million available. Is that? So yeah. Email or Lucas is that yeah. Okay. So Do you have a 3.4 letter, 3.4 million letter of credit? I was in Moorhead covering meeting this afternoon, so it was in my yeah. office. Okay. Yeah. Which, again, day yeah. of. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. But we just put in place a process that we're going to review. They're actually bid out already and still don't have a letter of credit. Correct. We just went and reviewed one. Yep. And there's tabled again. And then I met with your engine, the city's engineers on Friday to get the number, what it should be. It was agreed that it should be around that amount. That amount was emailed over today. And then now we get it that it's going to be something different. That what's going to be different? 3.7, this developer's <coughs> We did not know that the city council was going to approve that developer's agreement tonight. This stuff was all up in the air. I didn't know that the city council was going to approve this revision. The city council had approved the 50%. We And we also, in this meeting, approved that the um, letter of credit would be revised, revised after the bid ended. After the bid so ends. it doesn't really matter. As long, as long as there is a letter of credit protecting the city, I'm fine. Like I said, I wasn't in the office this afternoon. Mm -hmm. We're not awarding bids tonight. Correct. Yeah, so we can uh, you know, approve it contingent on those. Mm -hmm. Just verifying we have the letter of credit. Verifying that and then... Would you, do you want to have meeting. the question I would have for you is do you want to accept that 3.4 or knowing that that dollar amount is going to change or do you want to have a revised letter of credit based on After what the developer agreement. So, so that's actually the question. Actually the question is, do you feel that you can get that letter of credit modified for 3.7? Once we know what, I guess I, rather than raise it up to 3.7, it might not be needed. And then in 14 days, wait until the long time be. What was the other piece you said? <coughs> what was that and what was one before it? Uh, signed improvement district agreement, which we can get tonight. Uh, rescinding the notice to cease and desist and trespass, mm -hmm. which would be very helpful yep. to the city. Yep. After the last city council meeting, we had a cease and desist on that or on the city. So he's asking that that's removed. So. So I will make a motion approving to advertise for bid um, contingent on those three items. Okay. Chelsea makes a motion. The three motions. I'll I'll second. Oh, Go ahead. Big guy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Big guy. All right. So are you accepting the three four? Or are yep. you Okay. 
we'll just put in our process. You're going to review it once we award bids. Yep. If we're talking millions of dollars difference. That's something that you're talking three hundred thousand dollars. Yep. Okay. All right. So just put in a motion. Dave, put a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. All right, Matt. You got number seventeen here. Well, with that said and done, we need to do the second reading on the rezone of the extra lot between the preliminary and the final plot. Council saw this last time and uh, advanced it to the second reading. So this was rezoning lot 22 and block 1 to R6. Okay. Yeah. Russ, anything on that one? Or? We looked at it already. Right, so. You guys already looked at it? It's already, <laughs> no, just, just check it with you. Actually, I'm trying to keep you awake. As well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not sleeping. I'm, I'm looking down here. At it. The, uh, it didn't make sense not to have that lot, actually. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, I know we talked about it before. I just want to make sure nothing is. Motion to approve. Second. The result. Okay. Brian made a motion. David a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Passes. Okay, on 18, right, you got that Okay, number 18, I'll try to be quick on this. Uh, every year we present to the council uh, employee health insurance coverage. Well, we started that last year to present to council. Uh, the recommendation we have, we did uh, sit down with Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, myself and uh, Wendy, we sat down with them to review the plans, the coverage, we ran across the same variable we had last year where the difference in plan coverage costs versus uh, what we have right now wasn't very high or significant. Uh, so we're recommending to keep the plan the same. Uh, also it helps with the employees that helps make horse marketable. Uh, that is one factor I believe that has helped in being able to recruit and bring employees in to the city has been our insurance. Uh, there was an increase. They changed up their age banding structure. Uh, as you may know, health insurance has switched to where they used to do, if you're an individual, here's one cost, family, here's another. They had a couple of creative ways of how they did it to where now they do an age banding so you pay a premium is based on the employee's age or, that, or the covered individual's age. Um, they did do some changes there. It roughly resulted in about 10% increase. So I was originally told it was a 3%. When I ran the pen and paper too, it was just a hair over 10% increase. Uh, so you would see an increase. And that was applied across the board for all the different plans they had, not just the one we have. They said um, it was a 3%? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think they're referring to more like the dental or vision because those are so small. Okay. But when looking at the health care, it was around a 10% increase. But last year, it was approximately 11%. I believe it was an so increase there last it's year. It's within too. line of what it's been. Yeah. Uh, what, I had, what I have been told is other places we're seeing a lot bigger increase than what we are now. Do I believe that? Yes, I do. Because um, you, you hear of places or companies all the time facing drastic increases in health insurance. Um, at this time, I'm not seeking council's approval for anything beyond what we currently do for health insurance or for benefits. It would be health insurance, vision, and dental. Uh, we currently do not offer the like, short term disability, cancer coverage, and there's about a dozen other different options. So We're looking nothing, into nothing that. Other than the benefits pack, nothing in the benefits package would change. No, it would, yeah, that's so correct. Nothing would change. I could come back to you with that. I'm waiting to get some more numbers because we're shopping that around. We haven't shopped that around before. So we're trying to get some numbers from different companies for that. Uh, the reason you're seeing the health insurance information right now or discussion is because our plan year starts in August, so open enrollment would be July. So this meeting every year is when we would come to you discussing health insurance. Um, as for the overall budgeted line item for insurance and insurance benefits, uh, that would be increased in this next year's budget, just so you're aware. The reason for that increase, obviously, is because of the increased cost, but also increased amount of employees. We have a few more employees. Uh, 
coverage types may change every year during open enrollment. If an employee has family, they may have their spouse or if they have any children, uh, those dynamics change from time to time. And so uh, that may be influencer of how, if you see that item increase, you'll see it increase some, but the changes in that, that's why you would see a change you know, into the budget. Uh, you'll be seeing the budget probably in July, you'll be seeing a draft coming to council. <coughs> But so we basically just need a look, to approve. Looking for approval, or just continue with the same plan we continue, have. Or continue the current coverage package from our insurance provider. Yep. Second. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Tough kid, yeah. Wake yeah. up, Corey. Yeah, yeah. I'm here. <laughs> I'm on a rush. Okay. So, Brian made a motion. Do you got a second? All in favor say aye. Aye. Why are you talking to us? Yeah. Okay, Brian, you probably want to vote the next one. Right. That motion passes. All right, so we yeah. the cast Agenda item 19, uh, and it'll say. Yep, that one right there. Okay, the next item. This is a draft of the agreement. The reason it's a draft is a little different than what we've had before. Uh, a common complaint that we get every summer is mosquitoes. And whores has often had high trap counts compared to other communities. The re one of the reasons why in talking with uh, Ben Prather from Vector Control from the county has been due to when we do applications for mosquitoes, we're hanging throughout the city. However, horse is very long and narrow. Mosquitoes go all over and you really have a bigger boundary than what we're spraying. So what this is, is to work with Cass County Vector, be a little more aggressive in that vector control mainly during the worst times for mosquito breeding, which is really from about now till mid to late July. So I would ask the county is actually changed at July 15th to just say end of July, July 31st. Uh, the contract is for that part to do additional treatment in the extra ter territorial area for up to $8,000 additional. And what they would do is additional treatments, applications, hopefully we'd see a decrease in the amount of mosquitoes we have overall. It, it would be an experiment to see, but to give you a comparison cost-wise, that $8,000, that would be about the same cost it would be for us to do one aerial spray application. So that's to give you a comparison. We're going to get no. more coverage. We're getting more we, coverage because we're partnering with Cass County. It would be a heavier, more aggressive coverage to do that. Yes, because yes. we need to state that just because we're in Cass County, we already get basic support from Vector. We I think it's two years ago we started this eleven thousand six hundred dollars additional because yeah. we stated based on this, and now you're stating we want to put. 8,000 above that to get into the extra territorial area. To, to get try. in to the west of town okay. to get it to where hopefully that cuts down on the amount of mosquito, uh, mosquitoes that we have 